Sarah Anderson, welcome to the program. If we look at the S&P 500, 19 companies paid their bosses more than $50 million last year. And yes, a lot of that was in shares. But how on earth do these companies come to those numbers? What makes one individual worth so much? This is based on the foolish notion that the person in the corner office is somehow almost single-handedly responsible for corporate value and that the people on the front lines in these companies who might have their actual hands on the product and delivering the service are worth only a fraction of that. And it's a problem that we've seen get worse and worse in the United States. And I've been sad to see that uh, those CEO pay levels have been creeping up in other parts of the world as well as the leaders of many global companies point to their American counterparts and say, hey, why am I not making anything like what that guy's making over there? And so it is really becoming a worldwide problem. Sarah, you've been researching CEO pay for more than 30 years. What are the defining trends and changes you've noticed over that time? Well, I didn't start quite back this far, but in the 1960s, the gap between a large company uh, CEO in the United States and a typical worker was around 25 to 1. In the 1980s, it had crept up about 40 to 1, but then it really started exploding in the 90s, and now it's, it's not uncommon uh, for them to be 300 to 1, sometimes even thousands of times to one at low-wage companies. And so that has been a, a, a disturbing trend because all of the research has shown that when you have those extreme gaps between CEO and worker pay, you tend to have uh, lower morale and uh, lower productivity and, and higher turnover rates. And so it's, it's bad for business. It's not sustainable over the long term. What are the broader impacts for an economy when you have the figureheads of companies such as Tesla boss Elon Musk earning so much? I mean, he's still going through the courts to try and get his $56 billion pay package versus the lower pay of key workers such as nurses and teachers. I think runaway CEO pay is bad for our economy, bad for democracy and bad for business. Um, too much money is being siphoned and extracted from workers who are doing tough jobs at lower levels of the pay scale and funneled up to the top to the point where we have so much money concentrated in so few hands that it is a threat to our democracy. It's a threat to pushing for policies like we have not had a raise in the minimum wage in the United States for over a decade. Big, powerful corporate interests have blocked that, that kind of just small, modest uh, steps of progress to having a more equitably shared economy. And it can contribute to people shirking their responsibilities because they feel like, why should I try that hard when I'm getting such a, a small reward for, for the uh, labor that I'm putting into this? A recent Bentley University Gallup survey found that 82% of Americans think it's important to avoid a major pay gap between the CEO and the average worker. And a think tank recently suggested higher tax rates for companies where the gap is too big. Do you think that's the sort of idea that could be a vote winner in the upcoming election? Or is it politically too toxic for presidential candidates given they end up dealing with these individuals? Pushing for policies to crack down on CEO pay would absolutely be a vote winner. I have spoken to groups in uh, small towns, in swing states, in uh, four different states now. I would walk into audiences of Republicans and expect to get a lot of uh, debating and I'd be all armed with um, my arguments uh, against uh, extreme CEO pay levels. And what I found was enormous common ground. The problem is that big money has huge influence over our political system and candidates are afraid to rock the boat when it comes to their campaign finance. Uh, not all of them, but um, every poll is showing that this is a transpartisan issue um, across the political spectrum. People are just fed up. Do you think the pressure the majority of workers around the world have been feeling with inflation in recent years has made companies and politicians any more inclined to act on executive pay? I would like to think so. Um, I'd also like to think that the pandemic should have made it so much even more obvious that people doing some of the lowest paid work in our country are absolutely essential. 
and yet as, as soon as the, the heat was off, uh, companies s stopped uh, giving out their uh, li little extra hardship pay. They went right back down to the rock bottom wages at a lot of those uh, essential uh, companies and you know I, I'm still waiting for it. I thought after the 2008 financial crisis that the you know mystique would be gone that uh, these were not the top talents in in our economy that were responsible for driving our uh, our economy off a cliff and resulting in millions of people losing their houses and their jobs and yet almost immediately the big banks and other financial firms that were complicit in that national crisis turned around and started giving out big bonuses again and so it's just a very deeply entrenched systemic problem and it's going to take public policy i think to change it sarah anderson thank you very much all right thanks